What's good? I'd like to welcome everybody to another edition of the Producer Corner. It's your boy D. Dot, along with Cora, man. Hey, what's good, man? Glad to have you back. I know you've been on vacation, man. How's everything been going? Good, man. Good. What's going on? Good to be back, man. I needed to step out, do a little family vacation in time. Got to go up to Ohio, see my mom, see my brother. Then me and my brother headed up to New York to visit my dad. It was wonderful, man. Um, got to see my my nephew of two months. Uh, okay. He's doing good. Shout out to my boy Braxton. Um, but other than that, man, really just stay working. Even on vacation, worked a little bit. Um, did a little editing here and there. I didn't bring any type of speakers or anything, so I didn't want to mix. But I had some headphones, and I just put in some work, man. Did a lot of editing, um, a lot of prep work. You know what I mean? Stuff is rolling in now, so time to get back to it. Yeah, man, that's what's good, man. Like I said, uh, definitely glad to have you back. Um, and congrats on the nephew as well, man. You know, I know how that is. I got uh, four of them, man, right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what's, what's good with the topics for the evening? Um, right now, and you know, I meant to hit you up while I was on vacation about this one, but um, I'm about to get into mastering um, with a client, and I wanted to get into kind of how I'm going to go about doing it because I don't think we talk a ton about mastering and it's one of those things that clients will literally not pay for I think just based on the fact that they don't know what it is so I would like to get into mastering and kind of the difference between mixing and mastering and editing and you know that process of uh, how to master down a, an album properly all right all right man definitely looking forward to that man um you know I've just been kind of doing the gym thing, man, myself over the past week, uh, getting into it, man. I've been kind of going at it every day, man, just trying to really challenge myself to get to another level. Um, other than that, man, still promoting the uh, instrumental project, Synthesized Minds Audio Picture. Shout out to Strategic Peoples. I've uh, been getting some real good feedback on that. And uh, we're working on a lot of production uh, right now and a lot of new stuff uh, that we're going to be releasing within the next coming month. Um, tonight, man, we're actually going to be joined uh, by Trauma uh, from TraumaLoops.com, um, really known a lot for his um, expansion kits that he has out. Uh, I got quite a few of those, as well as a lot of his uh, publishing audios in relation to getting music placements and sound design. Um, he's got a lot of placements and stuff. We're going to chop it up in a couple of minutes. Um, we're about to go to our first commercial break of the night. We'll be back with the Producers Corner. And we are back with the Producers Corner, ready to get into our first segment of the night. Corey, go ahead and take the floor. Yo, yo, what's going on, guys? I wanted to, guys and gals, um, wanted to get into a topic that uh, I feel it's very, very important just because we don't necessarily talk about it a ton here on the show, and it's a very important step, and a lot of artists don't really understand what it is. And maybe some of you engineers might not even understand a clear difference as to what this is. And what I'm talking about is called mastering. Um, it is a process that is commonly misused when voiced. Um, sometimes people... Uh, we'll say mastering in terms of the entire process, and that's absolutely fine, mastering a project. Um, uh, some people refer to that actually, what they're referring to is actually the mixing process. So I wanted to break this down um, into the more technical terms so that we could all have an understanding and be on the same page. But before I can explain mastering, let's break down the three different steps in the audio process, and this happens in all types of audio, audio for video, um, you know, the mixing and mastering of music, um, even if you're doing radio, these type of things, these three steps, I feel are the most important and will always remain consistent in any audio field. Uh, the first is editing. Uh, the second is mixing. And the last is mastering. Now, keep in mind that um, these three different steps can be done by three different people. Sometimes, the same person will do two of them. Sometimes the same person will do all three, depending on, you know, what kind of situation you're in, what you've paid for with that engineer and their services. So what you end up getting in the editing process 
And this usually happens after you capture the audio. So after the recording process, um, the editing process is done by that recording engineer to kind of clean up that session. Um, this is getting rid of any audio that you don't need, uh, lining things up so they sound good, um, getting everything in the right place with the right timing. This is editing. This takes sometimes a couple hours. Sometimes it's really quick if you can record and you can do this cleanly then sure, um, editing should only take maybe 45 minutes, but sometimes this can, this can take a, a longer amount of time depending on how much audio you're working with and whom you're working with. So the editing process, um, again, and this is all referring to the post-production process. Of course, you all, in all fields, you have to record. Um, that's a given. So after recording, um, in the post-production phase, after you edit, you have to mix it. So what's mixing? Mixing is taking each individual track, each individual take, and making them sound cohesive, making them sound as one unit, making them sound good together to give you essentially what's going to be that song. This is the process where the special effects come in. This is where, you know, the cool beat drops come in. This is also where you got to dial in the proper amount of compression so that the vocal is even. All of those concepts that we talk about on this show happen during the mixing phase, right? Now, most artists think this is where the process ends. Um, and mastering is technically where it ends. And I'm going to say some things, and some of you may agree or disagree, but please listen all the way through before you do. So mastering is always going to be needed if you want your songs to be available on the proper formats that we have available today iTunes, radio, it has to be mastered. Some of you may disagree, but before you disagree, mastering is simply taking that mixed session as one file and making it sound good. So after you mix each individual track, you have to take the track as a whole and balance it as well. Um, that has to be done no matter what. Um, this, is, this is because mixing has, you have to give yourself headroom, you can't clip out. Um, things of that nature, um, mastering allows these things to not occur, the clipping to not occur. Um, it, it allows the audio to be as loud as it can be without um, sounding terrible. If you play a mix over the radio, it will not sound professional. It will not sound good. Um, and so some people have this misconception that you don't have to master, but yes, you have to master. Even if it's a very light amount of mastering, just a limiter, um, that's mastering. So you have to have some form of mastering. Um, and you, this is a separate cost. You have to pay for this. Um, and it's usually steep, depending on where you go. It's not always. Um, if you go to a mastering house, sometimes they get really expensive with the out-of-board gear and things of that nature. But it's just basically taking that mix. You bounce that down to one file, and now you're balancing that entire mix as a whole using compression, um, stereo imaging, um, EQ using all of these factors to make sure that you get a balanced sound out of this song. And so this part is the most important, but I think it's overlooked. And this is something I'm going to be doing in the upcoming uh, weeks here. Um, and I wanted to explain that it is very important that before you even master that your mixes are on point. And that's what makes mixing, in my opinion, one of the hardest things to do. Because especially, especially when you're working with an album, you have to make sure every track sounds similar. But you do that in the mixing phase and not the mastering phase. Sometimes people think you can just fix things in the master. Do not go for this mentality. That is a very bad thing to do. You should always try to fix things in the mix. So imagine that. You got, I have 19 tracks I have to do. While mixing these 19 tracks, I had to make sure that they all sounded similar. And if they didn't, I had to adjust them accordingly. Um, sometimes it's good even between mixed files to mix the vocal almost exactly the same um, and cut the same frequencies within the beats to give the vocals the same fit. Um, it's a very complicated process, especially since people are using um, single file beats and not tracked out versions as much anymore. Um, it's becoming a, a more complicated process, but your goal is to get those all to sound exactly the same and then rush them um, through the mastering phase uh, quickly, cleanly, um, 
and without problems. You don't want to get to a point to where you're fixing things in, in the mastering. Um, that can make it more expensive, and it can just not make it sound as good as it could. Um, so, D Dot, man, what are your thoughts on on mastering, uh, on mixing, editing? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, man. Um, you know, I agree. Like we were discussing in the in the sprinting room, uh, there's been several sessions I've mixed down for artists um, that, first of all, they're recording in really bad environments. Um, you got, you know, dogs barking. You hear uh, car horns in the background, uh, doors closing. You know, whatever whatever it is, man, um, they're not really recording in really good environments. So it really makes your job harder. And, you know, you, you have to give a... Well, basically, whatever you give us to work with is, you know, what you give us to work with. But at the end of the day, you still have to pay for the services and the time. Um, the mixing process, as far as that goes, you know, once you get everything cleaned up, if you're able to really get that recording how you want it and move forward, um, that's really, you know, where you're going inside, balance the audio, shaping your song, whether that's with EQ or compression or whatever effects you like to use. Um, mastering, that's really the most important part um, to me, kind of, you know, put the cherry on the top of the project. In other words, um, a lot of, for, for example, uh, placement opportunities are, you know, like you were alluding to, um, iTunes, Google Play, major online retailers, um, anybody out there where your music has to be taken professionally if your music isn't mixed and, and mastered properly they won't even you know they'll shut you down very quickly so you know if you want people to take you serious in other words you have to really come at them professional i mean it goes further than just mixing and mastering itself as we talk about in this radio show so you know definitely great segment man yeah 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 um I think our special guest is rocking with this man. So, D-Dot, let's go ahead and kick it to the commercial break, man. All right, all right. And we are back with the producing corner, John by our guest for the evening. Uh, Trauma, most known for his Trauma Loops website, audio courses on music placements and sound design. What's good, my brother? Yo, yo. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me, first and foremost. Um, everything's good, I hope, you know. Really just trying to put some good energy out there. And um, like I said, I'm glad you guys got me on here tonight. It's been a minute since I've actually spoke um, outside of, like, you know, videos and, and courses and just on audios and stuff like that. So it feels good to be live and get that, that living energy. Definitely, man. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. Like we were talking about in the screening room, man. I mean, I came across you guys back in, in 2009. And, man, it's just really cool to see, you know, all the progress that you, you made since then, man. I really, you know, like I said then, man, enjoy what you're doing. Uh, got a couple of your kits as well, man. And, you know, really bring some creativity out of you, man, sometimes, man, and the audio courses as well. So, um, you know, tell us really about I, – I, I like what you said on the, the – um, Music Monopoly course about linking up with other producers, having, you know, 50% of something is, is better than having like 100% of nothing. And that's, that's really kind of one of the things that I've taken out of it going forward. And I think it's really helping my creativity as well and just helping me grow as a producer. So what was your idea and your concept behind doing those courses? Okay, and so for that point, and that's a great question because that 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 phrase came to me from one of my first music uh, television music mentors and just a, a good friend now, but he was a, the one that first got me placement. So when he said that to me, it it, it really it really helped me grasp the music, kind of like the music industry as a whole because when you see. When you hear a song, you're not just listening to the song that an artist is on and then a producer. There's so many different hands in a pie. So in order for, like, even if you look at, like, a, let's go to the music industry, you look at Kendrick Lamar, 
you read all the credits on this album, there's a lot of different people that are on the credits, which means that the pie is split in so many different ways. So if you take it to, to um, just a television film, which is a great industry for music producers to focus in anyway, uh, mainly because you control your copyrights. You don't have to have to give up your copyrights for uh, advance or or because, um, you know, the, the record label wants to be the one handling all of the, 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 uh, the business for that song. You actually come in owning that. And on top of that, though, you also get to keep your, your uh, a large chunk of your publishing. So, and you control your publishing, so it's not, you know, you're not signing it away, signing to a record label. So, um, going back to the working with other producers, since you have that pie, you created it, right? They stay in copyright. You own the copyright to something as soon as you create it. Um, and the whole reason you got to go through uh, the the, um, the third parties to, to, you know, give it the stamp of approval is, is just so that it can stand in court, whatever, whatever. But... Without that, you still own it from the time that you that you created it, and so with that with that that means you bake your pie, you own a hundred percent of your pie. But if you can't really do nothing with it, then what good is that pie? If you can't really put it in a bakery to sell, then I mean, you know, what what are you going to do if you can't trade it? So if there's another producer or another person in any business. That, that could put you in a better situation and all they're asking is, yo, just give me a percentage and I'll get you in the door, that's, that, that's worth more than anything to me. Um, and from experience, I can tell you it, it, it's, it's great on the credential end and on the royalty end, bearing that you, you will have to split royalties. But the thing is, once you get the correct credentials under your belt, you can go work your own deals. And then you can eat 100% of your pie because now you have a door or a house or a shop to, to take your pie in, if that makes sense. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it does, man, because, you know, you, it was like, really like how you said that you're building your credentials along the way because eventually, I mean, yeah, you may link up to make beats with producers, or what have you, but I mean, eventually you kind of still at the same time doing your own thing. So you know, once those things stack up, it looks really good on your resume. And then you know, I feel a lot of the a lot of producers out there are really sleeping on these opportunities, letting these beats just sit on their hard drive, and you know, it could be out there earning them dollars, man, just money that they don't really have to work for. And every producer really strives to have that free time in life to do other things rather than work a nine to five. Um, right. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so as far as on your, on a lot of your drum kits and, and loop kits, um, tell us kind of about that portion of it, man, really how you got started with that concept as well. And, um, you know, pretty much where you started from up until now. Okay. So, I, I live by the principle that you know, coming coming from um, the coming from producing since '99. I mean, I went through the beat selling phase at an early age. That was my first quote unquote side hustle that I had to turn into a business. So as I as I got into the online beat selling, that was around 2007. And that's when I first heard about it. My homeboy, Main Ingredient, shout out to Main Ingredient. He put me on to um, to, to uh, a beat selling site. So I started to, um, you know, learn about selling beats. But I was always crafting drums. Every beat that I made, ever since I learned about stacking from, you know, different areas and coming up, I, I, I kind of just started crafting my own drum sounds from stacking to just designing them because I already had an idea in my head of how I wanted the snare to sound or the kick to sound. And then I realized that I was one of the most, uh, I was a, I was a drum junkie. I would go on on any site that I could find that had drum kits. I was there. I had to get my kit because what they do is they inspire. They 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 evoke a certain energy. Drums. If you go back to even just the the um, the tribal aspect of drum sounds, drums have always been a method of communication, um, a, a method of of of, of message, a, a method of vibration. So when you're when you start getting in tune with that drum frequency vibration that's gonna create the rhythm to your track, when you become one with that, 
you could do anything on top of anything on top of that. I want to say. So when when cats hear my beats, I just want to chime in before I get into the sound design. It started with drums and um and just playing with synthesizers back in the day too, as far as bass lines and leads and just um you know layering different elements of, of music to to create something different that didn't exist before, just like making the beat itself. So um. What I wanted to say, though, I, I kind of got lost in that, is um, before that, though, uh, it was really the drums started everything, and I realized that there was a lot that the drums did for the music producer. I realized that if I had my drum track solid, that I could do anything on top of that. And, and some of that came from just even um, some of my mentors telling me back in the day uh, an experience they had, and producers probably hear me tell this story all the time, um, the message that they got from Dre was that their melodies was dope, but their drums was lacking. So ever since then, I kind of put my ears to the drum frequency, became a drum junkie, then a, then a drum designer. So um, starting to design just different sounds and stuff and and having the drum business, we uh, started the drum business back in, in 2010 and wanting to expand beyond that into loops because it's not only just about the drums. It was also loops. There's a beat making video I got on YouTube right now where I was using a loop before I could play keys the way I could play. And, and partially, I love loops on on as far as um. And I believe producers should get into that business. If you if you're asking me that as well, producers should get into the business of designing drums and loops, of course, because these are the same. It's like recycling. It's like giving back to the same thing that that helped raise your sound up. That's what it is for me. I was using loops back in the day in, in taking keys and chopping them up off of records and off of CDs. I got sample CDs in my closet from years ago that I, that I could still pop in and take something from. A sound is a resource that's limitless and it's never ending. So when I really learned that, that's, that's what gave me um, the, 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 how can I say, the blueprint to be able to do what I want to do in sound, whether it's sound design as a business or sound design as a love or just, you know, even just love for sound, period. You got you to gotta be a lover of sound. So, um, but it all started with the drums. So I encourage every producer out there, man, you got to diversify your portfolio. So it's not just about selling beats anymore. You got producers who, lo who would love to use your stuff if your shit is hot. Am I lying? Not at all, man. I mean, yeah. it, the the one thing you also got Battle Cat to take notice, and you know, tell us a little bit about that, man. And I know y'all worked together on a on a couple of uh, projects. It's funny. It's funny you say that because um, I was just thinking, especially after the NWA movie, and I'm sitting here looking at this NWA poster. Uh, Shout out to Battle Cat because Battle Cat actually, if y'all want to see that NWA movie and you've seen that studio they were at in Torrent, that wasn't the actual one, but where the police was uh, was uh, going hard on them at, that's the same studio Battle Cat put us in back in the day when I was out there. So I studied under Battle Cat for two years, um, about two and a half years, but I was always learning his sound just from before then because what he brought Roger back. He brought, he, just like Dre brought the P-Funk back. And, you know, that's, that's what we do as producers. That's part of our gift is we could, we could resurrect music through sound. That's why I love sound. Sound is, there's no life without sound. Life is built off of light and sound. So, um, but with Battle Cat, how that happened was I was, um, I had, right when I moved to Cali, I had gotten this, uh, this beat battle. It was Red Bull Big Tune. I had been in the one out here in Phoenix already, and so I was still connected to the people that were throwing it. Shout out to Jake One and uh, DJ TV One out in Seattle. Jake One, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with him, but he was the one that chose me to be in the producer battle out here in Phoenix, and then they chose me again for the L.A. one last minute, uh, which was a blessing. So at the orientation, I was sitting at the table, and Jake One was there, and he was like, yo, um, you know, Knotts and, and Battle Cat are downstairs. And I was like, yo, Jake One, you need to introduce me to Battle Cat, like, right now. And so he introduced me to Battle Cat. I chopped it up with him for about 20 minutes. Um, 
And so we had the battle like the next day, I believe it was. And so the battle is on YouTube, too. And it didn't go all that good because um, <laughs> I told him, look, I was coming straight from Phoenix. If it was a movie, it would have been called Straight Out of Phoenix because I was straight out of Phoenix coming to L.A. <laughs> and the shit was funny because as soon as I said where I was from, I got booed for two reasons. It could have been any other time, but at this time, I happened to be in L.A. First of all, they had the immigrant stuff happening out here where, like, I believe uh, the senator or someone said something crazy about immigration. and So wasn't nobody fucking with Arizona at the time. Um, and then the Lakers were playing the Suns, and it was like um, it was like one of the last last uh, games of the playoffs or some shit. <laughs> I, yeah, so I had it bad. And we're dealing with Lakers fans. This is like a, a big ass show. This was way bigger than the one in Phoenix. Had a group of people out there, so you know everybody getting cheers. They hand me the mic. I'm like, yo, I'm for Phoenix. Ooh. They ain't hear no beat or nothing yet. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it was no bueno. But it was cool, though, because we played our shit. And some, like the, especially the second track, they had to kind of mess with. And um, they're not to be cocky or nothing. It was just funky. And so they kind of messed with that one, but they didn't give us that much love. And, and I don't want to take it away from the other producer we were battling, though, because it, um, it was, I forget his name, but that nigga had some nasty tracks. I can't lie. He came with it. He definitely came with it. So um, he deserved it as well. So I want to give it to him um, as well. But Battle Cat, so after that, I connected with Battle Cat. Here's the thing, though. He came He came into, like, the little, uh, and he was kicking it with, with the homie F Major at the time when I seen him at the actual battle. So when he came back to the, to the seating area, I connected with him and just was like, yo, um, we got a site, you know, at this time that we're working on, whatever, whatever. So I just connected with him. Then I sent him some drum sounds later. And, um, well, my first drum kit, the Trauma Drum Library. And so when I sent him that, it, it, it was on since then. He kind of, he dug the sounds, definitely. Um, and then we met up with him at the studio, chopped it up. Yeah, that's, that's basically pretty, it in a nutshell. That's pretty cool. I remember I saw the video, yeah, with you guys in the studio. I think he loaded the drums in the MPC and, you know, just started making a beat right there, man. It's definitely pretty dope, man. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to Corey. I wanted to ask a question regarding, I think, the number one question every person who makes beats tries to get into production, uh, even if they're making jingles, whatever it may be, they always want to know what that first step is into getting production opportunities. I feel that uh, making the beat for some people is not the hard part. You know, it's actually getting out there and selling them. But you can say that to somebody and they don't really know what it means. So what does that mean to you? What is that initial step? Okay, first of all, they say one of the first pieces of game I got ever before selling anything, I was 11, I was, I was selling candy door to door. And the first thing I learned is you got to sell yourself. But as I grew with that, I, I used to, it was so surface level to me that at first I thought it was just like, oh, you got to sell yourself, which means like I got to get people to buy into me, which is the surface level of it. But nah, the first part is you got to sell yourself. You got to buy into your own ideas. You got to believe in yourself. So that's what sell yourself really means. Believe in yourself. First and foremost, beyond a doubt, enough to put your shit online. There's producers that won't even take that step. So that's the first step. And if you're not confident in that area, then that's why I say go to the drums and the loop. Those are the founding principles of music production. I mean, hip hop started. Hip hop production started from a drum loop, you know. And so that that itself says a lot about about that. So um, that first and foremost, get your primary pr production principles down. And so. After that, you can sell your tracks to anybody. The whole world needs music. You can't walk outside without hearing music from somewhere. You can't turn your TV on without hearing music. Music makes the world go around. So if you're a farmer of music, you, you, you farm music from your bedroom, from your studio. You just got to find a place to put it. Just like you said, that's the hardest part, right? It's no different than a farmer planting crops, produce, 
and then putting it in and finding a market to distribute it. But these days, since you have, you can own your own market. That's the insane thing. When, when you see me building my, my sites, uh, I'm building uh, marketplaces, not only for me, though, but for producers as well. Um, even in Charma Loops right now, we got it set up to where we're offering producers opportunities, and we haven't publicized it, so this is like one of the first times I'll hear it, to where you'll be able to sell your own drums and loops on the site. Um, and there will be other, other things, too, as far as like television opportunities, going through some of the publishing parties that I'm, that I'm connected with. So, um, but it really starts with that because you can't sell anything to anyone unless you can sell it to yourself first. So you have to, and, and that's why the knowledge is important too. When I got into music, the more I got into making beats, the more I knew I needed that business side because if I want to sustain myself and my living, I got to be able to conduct myself business-wise. And that's where the sales and the marketing comes in because the marketing is getting your message out there. The sales is is, is basically um, you're, you're you're getting you 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 want for a producer you want an artist to buy your production. First, you have to what is the artist going to do? You have to you have to understand the mind of the artist. The artist needs to write a story, so your track has to tell a story. It has to be arranged right. It has to feel right. It has to have the right mood. You got to know what kind of artist you're going for. What kind of artist your beats are for. You know, and, and and go for that, and 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 don't just. There's a lot of there's a lot of producers who are still going for the major label. That major label is a dinosaur now. The best thing you can do is partner with you. Uh, you look at you look at the biggest record label out right now. I mean, one of the biggest ones is still it's still um, for my eyes, respectively, Interscope because of the moves that they're making. And they, I mean, Dre. That's the house of Dr. Dre. So, and you look at Apple Music, it's no longer just Interscope distributing the record stores. No, they partner with Apple. So now they have a whole online streaming thing. You know, so if, 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 if you're not also as a producer, you have to be on top of the, where the music business is now. Because if not, you're going to be lost. So you have, to have your, you have to have your mind on the business, not just on, I know we watch these shows and we see these videos, we hear the music, but you got to be on the outside of that. You got to look at what is making that. What is what? Is, what are the makings of what's going? To be honest. Gotcha. So be business gotcha. minded first and foremost. Is that well? That's second to getting your producer principles straight. Then get your business mind right because music, just like the fifty percent fifty, like you would do a deal, it, it's fifty percent business, fifty percent music. And nowadays, I want to take that back. It's really like ninety percent business and ten percent music. If you had a that's out right now, and you see the business that's being conducted. Right, I think you're absolutely right, man. Um, that's the hardest I hope part that answered too. Your question. It yeah, it really does. Um, and I, you know, I hope these 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 guys and gals out there is taking notes, man. That's that's pretty much, you know, the the basis of starting any business really, but especially in music, um, these concepts do apply in the business. Like I say, people really, really don't like doing it, but they have to do it. Um, one thing I did want to ask you here, um, as we, uh, reach near closing of this interview, I wanted to ask, um, you, you got a lot of stuff going on. Where can we find some of your products, um, of the many things you do? I know, um, you did an audio book, on some production techniques and things of that nature. You have that correct? And you, you've done, right, right. Um, I mean, you do the, the, the custom drum kits. I mean, you're producing yourself. Where can we find all of this stuff? Okay. Traumaloops.com is, is the hub right now. That's turning into what we're calling the producer society. And that's, that's a whole other thing. We'll talk more about that later or, or on, on another segment when it's ready. But, but Trauma Loops is where it's at, traumaloops.com. That's where all of the producer network is. I got some of my TV people on there. I got uh, producers that, that, that have been following me for years. Um, shout out to everyone. It, it's, it's a producer family. So you go there um, and connect with me and, and, and my network. It's a network. So that, and you can find me on beatsfortv.com. It sound, it's spelled just like it sounds, Beats for TV. And um, Beats for TV is really the the 
place where you can get those courses where the music monopoly that you spoke of, where I'm showing producers the, the nuts and bolts of music publishing, the stuff that we, we don't want to learn, but we need to learn, um, the shit that you try to go to school for, but you may fall asleep in class. That's why I put it in the ebook to where, you know, you can listen to the music, you can listen to the beat bump, and I'm telling you the stuff that I had to, I had to go through that to learn and, and experience as well. In the C section is what you're talking about. That's on Beats for TV as well. These three courses are only available privately. On Trauma Loops, you can get all the drums and kits. I don't mean to bounce around, but I meant to say that. So all the loop kits, all the drums, even from beyond me, there's other uh, vendors that we have that are great producers who, who, who have kits on there too. Um, so, yeah, go there for the kits, but for the courses in television music, that's Beats for TV. And Beats for TV, um, like I said, the C section is that course where I'm breaking down, showing producers how to break, how to arrange your tracks correctly for a broadcast production, which is what is needed in television film. They want your stuff in a certain way. Just like on radio, if you listen to a song that's produced for radio, it has a certain arrangement to it. Well, same thing works with um, television for music. And, uh, I'm sorry, music for television and film. So gotcha. that course is available on Beats for TV. So Trauma Loops and Beats for TV, you can find me at. It's all becoming one, though, pretty soon, as well, and that's what we're calling the Producer Society, where producers will be able to come and, and find more opportunities for television films, even sound design and, um, and things of that nature. Nice, nice. And, and where can we go to find you on social media? Uh, Facebook. Man, they made me put my government name up. Y'all don't be looking at my records. It's clean, though. <laughs> no, it's Brett Cleveland. <laughs> you can find me at Brett Cleveland, B-R-E-T-T-C-L-E-V-E-L-A-N-D. And um, Instagram, Brahma Guru, at Brahma Guru, B-R-A-H-M-A-G-U-R-U. Um, and Trauma Loops on Instagram, too. We always got stuff popping, beats, you know, streaming all the time. And Twitter, I'm just getting back on Twitter, man. My Twitter fingers is itching. So you can find me on uh, Twitter at Trauma Brahma. Uh, Trauma, of course, T-R-A-U-M-A-H. Uh, Brahma, B-R-A-H-M-A. And Trauma Loops on Twitter, too. So, okay. yeah, everything's connected through the, uh, through the um, Trauma Loops, though, because if you sign up, once you become a member, I'm going to send you an email. And when I send you the email, it has all of the social networks you can plug on as well. Dope, dope. Well, D-Dot, that's all the questions I have, man. Let me kick it back to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. It was, it was a pleasure, you know, having you on the show again, man. And, you know, look forward to working with you and following a lot of your work in the future, man. And, you know, like I said, if you have anything, man, anything, you know, you're welcome to come back on, man. Oh, give me shout outs too, man. Shout out to uh, before you get on. Hey, thank thank you. First and foremost, shout out to y'all, Corey and D Dot, for having me on because this is a breath of life for me. You don't you don't the the best teacher is a student and sometimes I'm so busy learning that I that, you know, I don't sit in the in the teaching position often and with their great questions you actually evoke some some, some great um uh, some great things that I was able to bring to the forefront. So I thank you for giving me the opportunity first and foremost in the platform to speak on because producing is something I've carried with me that stayed with me uh, longer than any girlfriend. So, you know, I take it serious. So, um, but I thank you all first and foremost. And shout out to the, to the Trauma Loops family and all of the producers that are a part of it. And look out for the Producer Society. Um, everything that you see me doing... I want to I want to show producers how to do, but not only show them, walk with them and give them a, a, a platform and space to do it on with me. So that's what that's what the 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 um, the backbone and the soul of the producer society is. So shout out to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Producer society, trauma loops. Pleasure having you, my brother. We're about to go to our next commercial break. We'll be back to the producers corner. And we are back with the producer's corner. Uh, I want to shout out our guest tonight, Trauma 
a very good interview, very good interview. We're going to be bringing, bringing you guys more and more interviews in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. We're setting them up every day. Uh, shout out to Strategic People, uh, as I talked about earlier in the show as well. Working on a lot of new stuff. Look out for that coming real soon. You can follow me online at d.majormusic on Instagram, d.81 on Twitter. Um, also, d.majormusic on Facebook. Follow Synthesize Minds on Facebook as well. We got a Facebook page up. Uh, post some, you know, beat making videos. Um, a lot of, a lot of clips from our, uh, project that we recently re- released on iTunes, other digital retailers. So, uh, you know, we, we're looking to get out there, man. Appreciate everybody that's really supporting the show, supporting Synthesize Finds, Major Music ENT. Uh, go to the website, majormusicent.com, if you want to actually purchase beats online. Um, we started a couple of new promotions online, so check out the website for, the, for more information. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. I'm going to pass it off to Corey. Yo, 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 want to give a shout-out to all our listeners. Thank you for tuning in week to week. I um, want to give a couple quick shout-outs. One to the uh, homie Kato. Shout-out Kato. Um, make sure you guys go follow him. Um, just search your social media for Kato Live Music. Um, so definitely big shout-out to him. Shout-out to Ken Woods, KOD Records, man. Um, we got an album brewing um, that we've been working on for a while, and it's going to be nice. Um, I'm engineering it, of course, um, and it just, it just sounds lovely. So shout-out to him. Um, shout-out my nephew Braxton, um, and shout-out sunny my brother um and congratulations on a new family um and shout out to his wine company maybe at some point in time i can see if i can get him on there to talk about his his wine company um but shout out to him and his company and uh that's all i got man um if you guys are looking for beats mixing mastering audio editing or audio restoration coolnerdproductions.com that's cool with a k you can also follow me on twitter and instagram k-o-o-l underscore n-e-r-d Yes, sir. This concludes another edition of the Producers Corner. Join us same time, same place, icebreakerradio.com, 17 Central Time. And this is it. We are out.